This is no ordinary video cassette. It is a special encoder unit that links your television with the Batcave's mainframe computer system at Warner Brothers Movie World. Please hold. Initiating uplink. You are now linked with the Batcave's mainframe computer system. Batman has pre-programmed the Bat surveillance system to scan Warner Brothers Movie World. <laughs> This week on Expedition Weekly, we're heading across the world to Movie World on the Gold Coast in Australia with a look at the now-closed Warner Brothers Classics and Great Gremlins Adventure. Warner Brothers Movie World. Enter the Grand Archway, and you are there. Lights, camera, action! You go on a studio tour, thrilled to exciting live shows, rides, <laughs> adventures, and more, much more. It's a full day's entertainment at Australia's biggest and most spectacular theme park. Warner Brothers Movie World. Hollywood on the Gold Coast. Warner Brothers Movie World opened in 1991 next to the Warner Roadshow Studio Complex. Designed by Cornelius Vanderbilt Wood, an American developer of amusement parks and the chief developer of Disneyland, who was reported to have had a falling out with Walt Disney and was fired, and his involvement with the creation of the park was omitted from all official histories of Disneyland. He also went on to design another park that will be visited on Expedition Extinct, Freedomland USA in the Bronx. Later in his life, he became president of Recreational Enterprises, a division of Warner Brothers. The park itself was completed within 16 months, converting Swampland into a theme park, with a similar model to Universal Studios or Disney's MGM Studios, with a focus on the attractions teaching you about making movies. Opening day attractions included a movie studio tour, special effects show, Police Academy stunt show, and the Warner Brother classics and the Great Gremlin Adventure. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, please listen to me. I'm terribly sorry, we must vacate this building as quickly as possible. Some gremlins have escaped from the film park. Queuing for the new ride took place outside the show building before entering in groups. Inside, you would visit into a movie theatre where you would watch outtakes from various Warner Brothers films, such as Batman Returns, but before the screening ended, it was interrupted and the gremlins had taken over. Boarding your 20-person ride vehicle, the story was that you were navigating your way through the film archive with over 6,000 Warner Brothers original film reels in order to escape the gremlins. The slow-moving dark ride moves through the backstage film process, with rooms filmed to editing, makeup, storage, as well as Gremlins recreating classic Warner Brothers film scenes. Periodically, throughout the attraction, another Warner Brothers character would appear. Seems we got a little redecorating going on in the next room. Beetlejuice, who would try and help you escape the movie archive. The ride ended with a vehicle crash effect and Beetlejuice. Uh, did I tell you I'd get you out? No, I ask you, am I not the ghost with the most? Five years after opening the ride, a duplicate of the ride opened at Warner Brothers Movie World Germany. Warner Brothers Movie World. Das ist Hollywood in Germany. This park had been open since 1967 under various names and owners, but was purchased by Warner Brothers in 1994 after closing a year earlier due to not being very popular. They began construction and reimagining of the park in 1994, and the grand opening was in June 1996, two years later. <laughs> This version of the ride would have some changes though. Beetlejuice would not appear, but in his place for some reason was Alf from the American sitcom that aired on NBC between 1986 and 1990. A little background. My name is Alf. I come from the planet Melmac. 
I'm a member of a civilization millions of years ahead of your own. Most of the actual ride would remain the same, however Alf would appear during the ride to help the passengers this time, and end the ride by electrocuting the gremlins. He was also featured in the pre-show being attacked by the gremlins. The ending of the ride was also changed, which did not feature the police cars crashed outside, but rather an Alf animatronic in a fire truck, along with Gizmo. Both versions of the ride ran at the same time until in September 2001, the Australian park announced it would be closing to make way for a new ride the following year. That new ride was the Scooby-Doo Spooky Coaster. Warner Brothers Movie World presents the craziest spine tingling journey ever created. The new Scooby-Doo Spooky Coaster. Be afraid. Be kind of afraid. From the studio who brought you Lethal Weapon, Wild Wild West, and Batman. Dad, that's the best day of my life. Only at Warner Brothers Movie World. <laughs> Based on the 2002 live action film, which was actually filmed at the studio adjacent to the park as the ride was being constructed. It's a wild mouse roller coaster by Mack Rides enclosed inside, with a short dark ride style section at the start, including a swinging axe and spooky themed audio animatronics. Sections of the theming were removed in 2016 due to them being a fire hazard, and it was updated in 2018 as the next generation of the ride, with a new story still based around the 2002 film. The main entrance facade is themed around the spooky island castle featured in the movie. Behind this though, the original attraction facade still exists. Two of the pre-show theatres also still exist adjacent to the rise queue line, as well as the unload station, which is now used as an evacuation path from the coaster. The German version lasted until the closure of Warner Brothers Movie World on the 31st of October 2004 after it was sold to Premier Parks, now Six Flags in 1999. The park gained some large investments with action-packed attractions and no longer attracted the family crowd. This decline in visitors resulted in the park again being sold to Star Parks in April 2004. The following year, the park reopened as Movie Park Germany, with everything Warner Brothers removed and replaced with newer themes from a mixture of 20th Century Fox, MGM, and Nickelodeon. After the park was reopened, the Gremlins Invasion ride remained closed until it was replaced with Van Helsing's Factory, opening in June 2011. <laughs> The park was again purchased in 2010 by the same company who owns Kennywood and Park Warner, among many others. The area of the park had been seen as a negative section of the park and needed reworking, and due to the popularity of the Halloween event, the park's general manager pitched the idea of a horror roller coaster just one month after the new owner's acquisition. It was approved with a 5 million euro budget as a Gerstlauer bobsled coaster themed to Van Helsing. Germany. Behold, a serious threat. From our experts, we've learned that vampires will attack Germany within the next few months, and without a defense strategy, there may be many casualties. Our only hope is Van Helsing. For a period of time, not one, but two Gremlins Dark Rides existed in the world, and this is one ride I didn't get to experience, but wish I did. One version with the ghost with the most and full animatronic Beetlejuices, and another with Alf. Zeit für einen kleinen Imbiss. Come, pussy, 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 pussy. The transmission is complete. The bat mainframe computer system is now shutting down. Auto log off is activated. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Weekly. If you enjoyed it, subscribe to join us on the expedition and let me know in the comments below if you ever got to see these attractions. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming expeditions and we will see you next time.